there's for some reason you're not dressing. He's a hay Mooley, six foot one, four hundred pounds. Four hundred, count him four. Caressa waiting for the screen, throws to Mitten and he doesn't come up with it. That took a long time to develop. I've been waiting, wondering when they were going to run a screen play against, against that pressure, and they finally do, and it took a long time to develop. Well, on that screen, you're supposed to let some of the guys come through so it creates space, but they're just getting through too fast. you got to get some kind of chip block on them to slow them down a little bit. We couldn't find Mitten because Huerta was running out there with him. <laughs> it's like a human eclipse. You, you can't see Logan when Huerta's <laughs> running in front of him. Third down, a big third down. 9-13 still to play. Highland trying to stop Mountain Crest. Bringing the pressure again. Caressa stands in, overthrows everybody. It looks like somebody broke off their route early. And it was probably Pickett. We saw him go to Pickett a lot in the first half. Hasn't haven't really hooked up in the second half. Fourth down and seven for Mountain Crest. They're inside the Highland 35. Probably would go for it. They have hard to tell because Gress is the punter as well. They're telling Putu Tao, come on back. There he is, big number eight. He's a tall drink of water. Yeah, just a sophomore. Trips formation to the near side. Is it Rigby that's in the backfield? Yes, it is. Now they're going to roll Caress out. Has a man, has a completion, has a first down. It's Taylor Root. Boy, that just looked flawless. That, that's the Mountain Crest offense we haven't seen for about four possessions. 16 yards on fourth down. Well, they haven't moved, they haven't moved Caress out of the pocket either. No, not until, a whole lot. Until now, really. He's very good at rolling to his left and throwing off of his opposite foot. Just like on that play, that's a hard throw to make, but he does it all the time. Well, he does a lot of things well. And Highland's done a pretty good job of roughing him up here in this second half. They've got five sacks. But here's Mountain Crest with a two-touchdown lead and trying to put the game away inside the Highland 20. And Caress is waiting until the back judge starts to count. Now he's counting. Give to Rigby. Oh, Rigby oh, on his oh. way. Touchdown, Mount Crest. 19 yards. That's the backbreaker. Well, Mount Crest hasn't been able to do anything here in the second half offensively. And then when they needed it, they come up with a touchdown drive short field as Highland went for the onside kick which I thought was a pretty good move by Highland but Mountain Crest takes advantage of the short field and they go up 28-7 with 8.25 to play in the game so Mountain Crest now back up by three touchdowns 28-7 See what Highland see what Highland will do when they come back out. You just don't have enough time to do much. We'll see after the break. scores 28-7 getting set to kick off for the Mustangs Justin Call and it's another returning starter for Mountain Crest region 5 looks to be a tough one Lee you've got Skyview Skyview may have one of the best defensive lines in the entire state probably the best defensive line but they bring all three kids back Nielsen Villanueva and other kids name left me sorry other kid 
that one will be a touchback come out to the 20. Uh, and you figure Logan will be looking to get back in stride. They don't have very many down years and never seem to have two in a row. You've got Mountain Crest. You've got Bonneville. You've got an Ogden team that surprised people last year. And Woods Cross wasn't any slouch either last year. Well, they're on Mountain Crest's schedule. Yep. And they're uh, they're not bad either. They play a team from Vegas now. At Rio Tinto, they play Lone Peak. Yep, Lone Peak. Now the Mountain Crest Logan game has been moved to a Thursday night because of the BYU Utah State game. Oh. That's on a Friday night. That's good to know. The Com LDS Conference weekend. Talfa with a one-yard loss. It's the first time he's lost yardage tonight. He has 43 yards on 12 carries. Well, here, here's exactly what we've talked about. You go to your horse, picks up three yards. It's the clock's still running. Now you're down under eight minutes. Oh, he lost a yard. Hey, oh, sorry, he lost a yard. So even even worse. Now you're at 7:55. You gotta you gotta run. Really, right now is when you need to run your hurry-up offense if you're Highland. You're down by three scores. Barlow looking down the sideline. Man breaks free and doesn't make the catch. Would have been out of bounds anyway. Faka Hakua, six foot four, 205 pounds. Well, you put about 20 more pounds on him, he could do some damage at the next level. Yeah, he's an athlete. He's such a good athlete, you put an extra A in that. Athlete. <laughs> get an extra syllable. Yep. For Highland tonight, he's got two catches, 20 yards. He hasn't run the ball much, but he's played very well defensively. Barlow rolls out, unloads. Akafua at the sideline. Does he make the catch? Yeah, he nice does. Catch. On third down and 12. A 14-yard completion. That's really a hard play when you're all at your right-hand quarterback on the short side of the field. you got about a foot to work with for your receiver. Great catch. Mountain Crest there, no hurry. Is it fun? It takes as much time as you want. Go ahead. You know, one of the things you need to talk about is the Valley Channel Player of the Game. Uh, today it's sponsored by Angie's and the Sports Academy, and you get a shirt as well. Breakfast, best breakfast in the world. Well, the thing you get at Angie's, you get a free coupon to clean the sink. What? Hello. What? Yeah. And you get a coupon for two smoothies, which are fantastic at the Sports Academy. What? I like the one called the Incredible Bulk, because it's named after me, and it's delicious. Who gets a coupon? The MVP. Can I be the MVP? No. I don't want to clean a sink. You want to clean that sink. OK. What is cleaning the sink at Angie's? What? Tell me. Aren't you from here? No, tell the people. Oh, okay, I will tell you. Cleaning the sink is this giant sink full of ice cream goodness. And it's huge. It's monstrous. There's that dive again. And if you clean it, you get a bumper sticker. If they clean it, they get a bumper sticker. Yep. I do that every night at home. <laughs> I don't know what's so cool about that. Uh, Talfa with a pickup of three. No, I, you know, I was, I was looking at that a little bit earlier. It would really be easy to give it to Caress. I think Pickett had a big night as things uh, went on, or as things uh, got rolling. Early on, he had all those all those catches. Uh, I think that's probably a good observation. I'd even throw Huerta's name in there. I was just going to tell you, I like Huerta a little bit. Throwing into double coverage is Barlow. Taylor Root with the pick. Because Huerta anchored that nose and didn't let Highland get anything going, and he did a good job of left tackle, and I'd love to give it to a lineman. I'm down with that, because that's what I was, and they were the best looking, smartest guys on the field. There's a flag on the far side of the field, and we have our first turnover of the game. With as many penalties we've had, I'm shocked that's the first turnover. Well, both teams have played it pretty clean that way. Yeah. Personal foul on Mountain Crest. Hmm, didn't see it. It was far side of the field. The official on the far side threw the flag. I didn't see it. It was after the interception. Either. Yeah. And 
talking about it a little bit. 